song or whether it be pain that I'm feeling, I always try and resolve the issue in every song I do, whatever it's about. It's one of those things that you can pick up and, and you can forget. But in that, I've, I've managed to write a few songs out of the guitar. But I have no concept or theory of how to play a guitar or to even sing. So I'm, I'm nobody really. And it's weird, almost a spiritual thing or something that flows through me somehow. I don't know. The more I think about it, the more I look at my fingers, the more it freaks me out that I can't understand how somebody who can't remember what day it is, like, is suddenly trying to play a guitar. It's totally organic, and I don't know how it works. It, to, to me, it's like carving a piece of wood. It takes time. I can't just write a song there and, and that be it. I have to think about it. Probably around 2000, maybe, somewhere around there. Um, yeah, I met Bennett, so yeah, it was a good time. He's been able to play with an amazing keyboard player. used to go out on my own, Benny used to go out with different bands and when we met through Red Tape was the time that we actually started meeting as a couple. One of my favourite tracks on the album. It's an old song of, of Julie's. I think the, one of the first songs that she wrote of this series of songs. Um, Julie was an established singer-songwriter before I met her on the local scene um, and had worked with a couple of different producers and had already recorded this song. Um, we tried to record it, we'd done an acoustic version of it, um, a live version of it, and we never quite got the feel exactly right. And the drum groove that Richard established was great. Obviously Darren's bass really pumping that along. And listening back to that recording now, especially the tone of the instruments, the tone of the recording, the mix, it's just right. And after trying for so long to get it right and then finally landing on something where you think, this is actually, this is, I'm really happy with that. It, yeah, it was worth going through that process to get to that point. Me and Judy first got together, um, we knew that we wanted to make music together, um, and try performing. We, at the time, were very poor. I, I was studying music and we had no real income. So we used to go to little different venues. There was a, a place called the Gardener's Rest, um, which was a lovely pub. Um, and we used to play there sometimes for some cash. And it, it was for money as well. It, we were skin. You know what I mean? No, no money on us, and like playing for either some food in a, in a cafe or something, or, or like some a few beers. You know, we've come a long way since 
probably getting yeah, 20 quid here and there for some food. But uh, yeah, it was a long time ago and, and you forget those small things, like the bits where it goes a bit wrong or you think, what the hell are we doing? We need some money. I've been working with uh, Bennett for a long time, I've known Julie for a long time as well. Um, I was initially brought into the project because um, they've got quite a few uh, recordings already and they wanted to curate them into an album and they wanted to record a few things that they'd never had a chance to record uh, just to kind of finish it off. That got a bit out of hand because then I was brought in to mix some of the other stuff as well and in the process of mixing them then we decided to add a few things. So in the end what I ended up being was um, like an album producer alongside Bennett um, to put, whole, put, put the whole thing together to mix it all um, and make it into a, a seamless album from start to finish. And the history sort of goes something like uh, I got like an 8-track cassette machine, uh, recorded Bennett's band when we were all teenagers by uh, shutting a door on top of a load of mic leads and seeing if we could get anywhere near a decent sound with 30 quid mics <laughs> onto a cassette. somewhere close but uh, you know as time's gone on you know between uh, Bennett and myself we built up a really good chemistry and obviously the musicians he's uh, he's been working with you know you, you get to know them as well and Julie obviously outstanding songwriter and such an easy person to build a chemistry with so that's kind of how I got to know the band in general but Bennett I've known for a long 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 time. The first thing I did for it um, was uh, the track Wear Yourself Thin, which was a long time before the uh, album was even conceived. Uh, we recorded that probably about 10 years ago. And before that they'd obviously done recordings with other people and they made their way onto the album as well. We managed to get the stems and uh, embellish those a little bit. Um, we did another track in 2010, uh, Deep Blue Sea. But then we started talking about the concept for an album probably about 2014 and probably started working on it in about 2015 to bring together all these old recordings and make some new ones and uh, yeah, so that was kind of the history of it. The rhythm section is uh, something to be admired because the rhythm section consists of uh, Richard Storer and Darren Campbell, both unbelievable musicians themselves. I think uh, I'm right in saying that the first recordings for the album were made at Red Tape Studios in Sheffield. We also had a, a session guitarist in called, uh, called Matt Whitaker. Excellent, one of the best in Sheffield, I think. Jube have got such a nice energy about them. It's, it's, it's so important to capture that energy. But at the same time, they're a very, they've got a really smooth sound, so you've got to make sure that everything is just in the right little pocket. But to capture the energy in the first place, we basically did a live session, and that mainly involved keeping the drummer happy because the, it's not a natural environment for for Richard, um, but uh, when we were in that environment and we got the vibe just right, we got some unbelievable takes, um, and then it was just a matter of curating the right take, um, and then layering it up with the things that make it uh, the song that it needed to be. Um, so that was kind of the approach, really. 
I mean, obviously, then there were people uh, working on the artwork as well, uh, working on the photography and so on. So, um, yeah, but it's been uh, it's been a great team of people to work with. <laughs> but it's a beautiful door, bright red. It was our friend Richard who uh, who told us about this door. The concepts of the album, or the name of the album, being as one door closes. Um, it was obvious that we needed to find the door. We had a friend of ours, a um, great guy called Chris Saunders, agree to take the photo at the door for the album cover. And because not only did we have the album cover of the door, we had some photos taken here. In fact, I think you would have probably been stood here. And yet he set up all these like machines. We had a smoke machine coming out of the door. Um, yeah, it, it was it was lit to a beautiful, kind of dark looking, eerie shot. Beautiful to see though. Um, and even though it was cold, we managed to get some decent pictures. We didn't really want it to look too gothic. I know it seems gothic coming to a cemetery, but the idea is um, when you're going through bad times, you might be on this side of the door, and we set up some lights, so there was bright lights coming from inside this building. Um, and the idea is that there's hope on the other side of the door. So a cemetery can be a beautiful place anyway because you remember perhaps loved ones or, or history. Um, but yeah, it was like this was the darkness almost. And through the door is the, the light, the hope, the better times. That's the idea. <laughs> yeah, it's a strange place, but there's something hauntingly beautiful about the whole building, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's got a Masonic edge to it as well, almost Egyptian-like uh, figures around. Mm. It's beautiful. So, as one door closes... I'm scared looking down on you You're everything, everything styles on the album. When, when people ask what the style of music is, I quite often struggle to, to describe it because we draw on a lot of influences, um, classic soul, jazz, some funk, and then contemporary singer-songwriters. And we take all those influences and we've ended up with this album where one of the tracks might be very soulful, a little bit funky, and then another track might be a really down-tempo acoustic thing. There's a, a track that I pieced together from some guitar parts that Matt Whitaker laid down um, that I put together at home, um, which was 
the intention of that track was to be a prelude for a, a song called Civilized, um, which ended up being called Inside. It was basically almost completely uh, put together by Bennett um, in, 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 his, in his studio. And it's just very sparse piano chords and just the odd little bit of guitar that he'd just taken from stems he'd got from the studio uh, and kind of curated and pieced together and then, then he brought it back to me and we mixed it and, and it sounds absolutely heartbreaking. I just wanted space. Talk to Julie about this. And we were thinking, well, there's a lot going on and you need, sometimes when you're listening to, to an album, you need a bit of a breather at some point. And the idea of Inside was literally to be some breathing space. And ended up playing these really quite minimal piano parts um, and adding these really atmospheric guitar parts that Matt had laid down. Oh, people's a good one. It, it's good because I can put my guitar down, uh, but not only that point, it's, um, it's great because we were, we were all sat in the room. Benny had got this tune that he, he, you know, he was playing on the keyboard and then they all started jamming around it and they started singing and it was one of those natural tunes that comes out in a room and it's just right and it feels, feels, you know, just right for the tune. So yeah, it took a few times to get the, the lyrics right, but it was one of those easy tunes that's, that's funky and cool as well. So yeah, it's one of my favorite tunes, definitely. Drag is essentially about when you're going through bad times or you may be in a certain situation that you can't find your way out of. Um, you may be in a job that you don't like. Um, Maybe in a relationship you don't like, some situation that you need to move on from. And you're dragging, you're dragging, you're doing the same thing. Perhaps there's an addiction that you can't stop. And the idea is that you can move on from there. So the verse section of that song is in a minor key. So it feels a bit sad. Uh, that's the part where you're trapped. However, it moves on to the chorus, which is in a major key, um, which represents the hope possibility that you can change, you can move on, you can get out of that situation. And that is in line with the concept of the album. The album title is One Door Closes, the old saying Another Opens. So yeah, hope, hope and positivity can be on the horizon when you're in a bad situation. I, I, it's really abstract, but the comfort me, I, I love how it goes down to nothing. I like that, that crackly warm fire and just like a, a peace through all this craziness that's been happening. And then it turns into like a just me on my own. So um, that stands out for me. They all stand out, every one of them. It's turned out genius, in fact, the way everything's been placed beautifully. And I've come back to listen to it. I put it to one side and came back to listen to it. And it's brighter and bigger than I remember it. One thing that I'm really pleased with is how the, how the album finishes. Because I always, I always like an album when, uh, you know, you come to this sort of epic climax and you can feel that the album is just coming to this moment. And for on this album, that would be Civilized. But then, one thing I always like in albums, one thing I think we did pretty well on this one, is it goes into Behave at the end of the album, which is almost like an epilogue. And I like that. And I like it in albums where you think it's come to an end. And it's just another song just to kind of remind you what it's all about. Um, and Behave is just one of those tracks that makes you realize that this album through all the tough times that you know that uh, Julie's talking about throughout the album this album really is about love and about how love kind of helps you through all these hard times i